Germany has declared war on the Low Countries and the um, Western faction, as well as Denmark and Norway. So this is the month that the war will swing into gear. To begin, the Axis is placing a surprise attack marker on Brussels. This means that it's going to get a plus one to all combat that occurs within two hexes of Brussels for this uh, this month. So to begin, the Germans are activating this 14th Army uh, at a cost of one production point to activate a regular infantry unit, which I will mark on the production chart. And it incurs two movement points to attack this the Danish unit here. One to move into the space and one because it's an attack. So it starts with eight movement points and I've reduced it to six, showing six now. The attack, uh, Germans get a, a positive four dice roll modifier. <clears throat> Two for the fact that it's a German unit, and two because I'm also using air support. So I'm going to indicate that by adding a sortie marker to that air unit, and in fair weather that adds another plus two, so for a total of plus four. The Danish unit, because of the white stripe here, it indicates that it's not a full strength regular infantry field unit instead it's a garrison type unit and uh, those are reduced strength units so they have a minus two combat DRM so we've got a plus four to minus two DRM roll uh, one dice for each side and Germany first is a two and the Danes roll a six so 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. So it's 6 to 4 on the combat results table. 6 to 4 is a retreat, DR. Look on here, DR, Defender Retreat. So the Danes will retreat one space to here. The German unit will advance after combat. The German unit remains activated and still has six movement points left. It'll use two more to resume its attack, its mobile attack against the Danish unit. So I'll reduce the movement points by two. The uh, dice roll modifiers remain the same because I will add another sortie to the German air. So it gets another plus two uh, DRM. And we'll roll the dice again. German 3, Danish 6. So this time it is 7 to 4 on the CRT. 7 to 4 is another retreat. I just realized I hadn't placed the minor powers uh, will, uh, national will markers on the, on the track. So I have done that. And under here, under the Netherlands, you've got Belgium, Denmark, and the Netherlands all at national will of two. Now, why that's significant, given what's taking place here in Denmark with respect to this retreat, is this. There's two cities in Denmark, uh, Aalborg and Copenhagen. If Denmark loses either of these, they lose two. Actually, if they lose Aalborg, they lose two national will points. If they lose their capital, Copenhagen, I think it's four. Either way, even the two is, is uh, all that would be necessary for Denmark to surrender. So if they lose either of these cities, they will lose the war. Um, or they will, they'll surrender. So it kind of doesn't really matter which way the Danish unit retreats in, in that sense. Um, However, if they retreat this way, then the Germans can just scoot up along here and 
take Alborg uh, without any further combat and be in position to attack Norway. And I think instead, if the Danish unit retreats this way, then that means in order for the Germans to advance on Copenhagen, they're, they're in a zone of control if they're in this hex. So they'd actually have to fight one more time. Um, plus, even if they even if they win with a retreat again, if they'll have to fight yet again, or else just come in here and take Copenhagen, in which case the German unit is is way over here, and that leaves Alborg without being conquered. So that would require an addition. What would that require? Um, well, this unit is designated for, or yeah, reserved for uh, for being convoyed over to Norway. So um, the the Germans pretty much have to take Alborg. So they will uh, they'll be pressing pressing this way. So the Danish unit should retreat here. And the German unit will pursue by advance after combat. So there's still four movement points left. It still takes two for the Germans to continue the attack. Um, I'll reduce the movement points to two now. So another sortie added to the uh, Air Force. And the same odds, or the same DRMs. Two dice, German three, Danish four. <clears throat> so this time it's seven to two. Um, CRT, seven to two. DD. What does DD mean? Defender disrupted. If the defender is a reduced unit, eliminate it. So, success for the Germans. The Danish unit is eliminated. Germans advance after combat. <clears throat> they still have two movement points, <clears throat> which is convenient because it costs exactly one point to move into another hex and an extra point to move into an enemy city. So with their final two movement points, they take Alborg. And I'm going to put a control marker there and reduce the Danish national will to zero. <clears throat> which means that it's at zero so it's a uh, okay let's do this right look at the rules for uh, what happens when <clears throat> let's get the terminology right okay when a country national will drops to zero it collapses and when a country collapses, if at least one of its mainland city, cities is under enemy control, which it is in this case, and there is an enemy ground unit in its mainland area, which there is in this case, the country is conquered. And there's exceptions to that, but they don't apply. So first, all of the countries, all of Denmark's counters are removed from the scenario. Also, the uh, a pro axis marker is placed into the diplomacy cup. Next, the axis have a choice uh, about removing any pro, sorry, any enemy, uh, like a pro Western or a pro Soviet or strict neutrality marker from any capital city. Or, alternatively, it can add a pro-axis 
or strict neutrality marker. Sorry, it picks a neutral country with which it shares a land border. Oh, with which the just conquered country shares a land border and uh, puts a, a pro axis marker in the capital hex as long as it doesn't already have a <clears throat> pro-Western or pro-Soviet or strict neutrality marker in it. But in this case, well, would that include Sweden? Rule 1.3.4 says a border hexide crossed by a strait is not a land border. So there are no countries that f fit that <clears throat> definition. So that part of the results of Denmark being conquered are not going to apply. But next we take the national will marker for Denmark and we move it on to the Axis faction card under conquered countries. Okay. Next, we take a land unit from this conditional box in the Axis faction card and move it into eliminate it. And that's going to be ready uh, next turn for mobilization. <coughs> and next, we increase the German national will by two, or Axis national will. No, German national will, yeah. So up to 49. Okay, this unit is now deactivated. Now Germany activates this <clears throat> air unit again, so adding a sortie, and it's going to rebase. Now rebase is uh, air is movement, air movement, and so we look at the um, player aid chart, and up here movement. Full supply, it's in full supply. Lay ground units have eight movement points, all others have ten. So it has ten movement points, an air movement, any hex. It just costs one. One, two, three, four. So well within range. So that is where the air unit now is based. And that is within striking range of Norway or, or air providing air support of, uh, of Oslo. Now looking in the rules in rule 6.3.2 6 amphibious invasion it says that the an amphibious invasion can only take place in a sea zone containing a surprise attack marker. So I'm going to revisit this decision to place the surprise attack marker um, on Brussels <coughs> So I can do that without uh, prejudicially affecting anything down here since nothing's happened yet and no decisions have been made by either side as a result of that placement and instead uh, that will be placed right here in Norway. Actually, I have to make a decision about whether to place it, basically place it on land so it affects land combat or place it in the sea zone. So it's going to be in the sea zone because that's where it has to be in order to make um, the amphibious invasion uh, eligible. So Germany declares it's going to make an, uh, an amphibious invasion across sea zone what was it? 11, 12 from with this unit, which is which is activated uh, at a cost of one production point. And um, and using this convoy unit and that's going to take a sortie marker which is not placed right yet and the, re and the reason for that is because it's conceivable i don't think i don't think it is in this case but 
you know, um, if if there were allied units uh, close by, closer to the action here, it's possible that that could be intercepted and interdicted, which would result in more sorties than just one being added, and possibly having to return to port. Um, but you can only inter intercept an amphibious invasion across two sea zones, and um, the closest allied naval unit or air unit, well, the air unit is way out of range, because that's not two sea zones for the air unit. Um, the closest naval unit that could do it is the home fleet, British home fleet, that's in sea zone 10. So 10 would be the first sea zone, and 11 would be the second one. So, and it's only, like I said, it's only within two sea zones. So that's out of range. So it's not possible to intercept this. Anyway, so um, I don't, yes, I think we would then move this to Oslo. And that's where it's, it's attacking Oslo itself. And we're going to add a sortie to this air unit so we can provide air support. And we're also going to um, do something else, which is what? Oh, yes. We are going to uh, add the German airdrop. Eve event to this attack as well. So the German paratroopers are involved. <clears throat> now let's just see what the um, DRM is at this point. So here's a look at the DRM for the Germans as the attackers. At first they get a plus two because German troops get plus two. They get another plus two for the air support, so that's four. They, land, they then lose one because they're attacking a enemy controlled city, so that's three. They also lose one. Um, you can see on the CRT for an amphibious invasion attacking a unit in any hex. So they would lose one for that. So that's two. Uh, but then they get two for naval support, attacking a unit in coastal hex affected by fair weather, which is the case here. So they're back up to four. So the total is plus four for the attacker. Now, for the defender, first of all, they're minus two because they're a reduced strength unit, which you can tell by the, the white band across the, the unit. And um, they lose another two because that's the effect that the paratroopers have. You can see there it says defender minus two on the flip side. So they're minus four. So now take a look at the CRT. So plus, so let's assume the Germans rolled one, added four. So the lowest they could get is five. The best the Norwegians could do would be to roll a six, subtract six, uh, four, which would be two. So the best they could, the best the Norwegians could hope for would be a DR result, which is defender retreat, which would mean they'd have to uh, leave Oslo. The Germans would take Oslo, which is their capital. They'd lose four national will. Their national will is only at three, so Norway would be, con be uh, conquered. Even if uh, Norway was, or even if the Western Allies were to uh, use this event marker here, ground support, it provides a, a plus one DRM. So that would that would mean that they would be uh, minus three instead of minus four. And the result would be at best uh, um, a f a six minus three is three. So it'd be five down three. It would still be the same result. So there's no sense in using that ground support marker. 
and there's really no sense in even rolling the dice. It doesn't matter what happens here, whether they retreat or if they're eliminated outright. Uh, the same result. So, this unit is eliminated. Oops. The German infantry moves into the port. This convoy unit is also in port. Uh, the air, yeah, okay. We're going to change control of the place of control marker on the city, indicating that it's now German control. Um, yeah, we. Uh, one of the things you do is eliminate the units of the conquered country, so we'll eliminate this. We will place the national will marker for Norway oops, into the faction card for the axis. We will increase the German national will by 2 to 51. And we will place another German land unit into the eliminated from the conditional box. We will end this na uh, activation. We will increase the sorties on this convoy unit. I already increased the <clears throat> sorties on this air unit. Now this dice symbol on the airdrop unit indicates that uh, has to roll a dice and it appears that many game turns later. So we're rolling one dice is a five and where's the turn track marker? Five would be one, two, three, four, five would be October. So we put it on the turn marker, turn track marker, turn track for that for October. Now the surprise attack marker also goes on the turn track, uh, and it, uh, you don't roll the dice; you just put it four turns on. So one, two, three, four, right there. Okay, now it's time for the main show. Okay, the first thing I think is this German unit, air unit, is going to activate for an airstrike against the French Air Force to attempt to get air superiority right off the bat. The German air get a plus two modifier just for being German air, and that's the only modifier that applies. So plus two to the German roll and nothing added or subtracted to the French. So dice German is two, French is five. So four to five on the CRT, four to five is nothing. Diamond shape means the combat is over. So nothing happened. <clears throat> now, to be clear, we look over here on uh, where air naval combat DRM. No air naval combat results. Okay, so here it is. Uh, diamond shape attacker and defender each had one sortie. So we will do that. Place marker sortie. I like to. Put that beside just to make it easier to see. And sortie marker here. And the Germans are going to do that again. This time both sides have a minus one. So the Germans instead of a plus two will have a plus one and the French will have a minus one. Uh, okay, so here we go, dice, 
German is four and French is three. So this time it's five and two. CRT, where are you? CRT five and two, DR plus two. So DR, DR attacker adds one sortie, defender adds sorties equal to the plus part, the numbered part of the CRT. So one more is added to the Germans, but two more are added to the French. Now the Germans are going to do that one more time. This time, uh, this time it'll be uh, zero DRM for the Germans. That's plus two, minus two. And this time it'll be uh, minus three to the French. So zero and minus three. Dice, uh, yeah, dice one German is one. And French is six. Six minus three is three. One uh, plus zero is one. So one to three, CRT. Uh, it over here, one to three is AS plus two. So AS defender adds one sortie, attacker adds the plus two. So that means this is up one, this is up two. They're both at minus, they are both at four sorties. So that did not work out for the Germans at all. What to do next? I think at this time the Germans are just going to go ahead with the land attack. They're going to uh, first deactivate this. Now, unlike the land units, the air and naval units can activate several times during the during the course of a a month. Um, so, activating this armored unit, and that costs two production points for activating armor. So down here. Now that gives it 10 movement points. Now takes it would normally take one extra movement point to cross a river. But in this case, it's crossing river, but it's crossing it along a transport line. And that negates the cost of the river. Um, if it was, if this hex was occupied by an enemy, then it wouldn't be able, the German unit wouldn't be able to take the advantage of the transport line to reduce the cost of the uh, terrain due to the river hex side. But it's not occupied, so it can go ahead so at a cost of one movement point, it moves into here, leaving nine movement points left. Now to attack Br uh, Brussels would be one to move in, another one because it's a, an enemy city. Oh, and one to attack, so that's three. So one, two, three, down to six now. Um, we're going to activate this air unit for support. Now the French have a decision to make. Do they activate this air unit in support? The range is five for support. It's clearly within range. If they do, then there's going to be an air combat and it's going to be uh, plus two and minus four. So the French are going to hold off on that, uh, maybe involving the air unit later when this air unit has accumulated a few sorties. However, the Belgian unit, because it is, um, yeah, the Belgian unit can take advantage of the ground support, one of the ground support event <coughs> markers on the Western faction card. Um, so they're going to bring that in. And the... Uh, okay, so let's calculate the odds for the DRM. 
So the attacker gets two for being German, two for being a tank in fair weather, two for the air support, minus one for attacking an enemy city. The defender gets plus one for the ground support. And that looks like it. So it's plus five to plus one. So the dice, the German dice, the Belgian dice, one for the Germany. One plus five is six, and three plus one is four. It's six and four on the CRT. Six, six and four is a DR. So DR is defender retreats. Must retreat one hex away from the attacker. If it can't retreat, then uh, you look below here. Uh, defender cannot retreat. If it's a reduced unit, it's eliminated. If it's a full strength, reduce it. The unit stays in the hex and the combat's over. So, let's take a look and see if it can retreat. Well, this, this doesn't get in the way. So we just move that over here. That's not, that's just placed there for, as a member, it's not a unit, it's just a marker. So yeah, they can retreat to Antwerp. And that's what they do. So the, uh, yeah, so the Sherman unit advances after combat. puts it in control of the capital, places the control marker there. Now, what's Belgium's uh, will, national will? It was two, so it just lost four national will. So that is it for Belgium. So this unit is eliminated. And the um, the will national will marker for Belgium is placed in the conquered box. German national will goes up by two. And one of the German infant uh, leg units. The land units is placed in the eliminated box and a um, now now that I think about it we didn't do this for Norway um, didn't do all of this for Norway did we do any of us did some of it. I'm almost positive we didn't put a pro-axis marker in the Diplomacy Cup for Norway. And I'm going to do that now. Actually, I'll check and see. There should be one in there. I'm going to pause that. Yeah, there's one in there for Denmark, but there should be another one in for Norway, and now another one in for Belgium. So I looked after that, and if there were a neutral country adjacent to Belgium, it would get it could get a an a, an axis a pro axis uh, marker on its capital, but there isn't any, so we'll forget about that. Okay, so let's deactivate this plane and put a sortie to indicate that it's for the, um, this is the air support it provided, or the ground support it's provided here. So, this is still activated, and it has six movement points left. And I also need to roll the dice to determine which turn this ground support marker comes back uh, into play. So one dice for that, five. So it doesn't come back in for five turns. Turn track. One, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, five.
but let's just look at some choices we have here. Let's see, the German unit doesn't want to get too far ahead of its supply lines. Um, there'll be other units coming in and pushing these French units back, presumably, if a disaster struck and they weren't able to do that, then it would allow the French to close the, close the, well, to cut off their supply lines. Um, so we have to at least be aware of that. If they continued attacking, they only have four points left, so it would take two to attack here. Presumably, well, let's say they take it. They wouldn't have enough to attack Paris, because it would take one to move in, one more because it's a city, and one for the attack. So it would be three. So it would take five to take Paris. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, same if they went this way. Well, they couldn't go that way because of the zones of control blocking the path. It might be tempting to stay put or to take, to try to push one more space forward. And either way, the zone of control would extend into this hex and this hex. As a result, with a unit coming in behind, it could leave this unit without a retreat hex option, making it easier to eliminate, if not uh, uh, reduce it, if not eliminate it, because it couldn't retreat this way because of the overstacking. Couldn't retreat here. Can't retreat into a enemy controlled city. Actually, it could, but it'll that will probably be in the zone of control of the attacking unit. Presumably the attack would come either this way or from Brussels itself. So, now none of that changes if this unit is here or here. The same with this unit. This it would, wouldn't be able to retreat here or here. And if the attack came from Antwerp, it wouldn't be able to retreat here either, so its retreat avenues would be blocked, making it easier to be reduced, if not eliminated. So, the question is, do I push on to here or stay where I'm at? I think I mean, was first inclined to say fortune favors the daring, but not always. And the reason I'm hesitating now and thinking that I'll stay put is because if I do attack, I'll need another air sortie, which will reduce the um, already fairly taxed air force. Instead, I can preserve them by, yeah, there's no real advantage to, to taking that. Might make it a little easier to take Paris next turn, but Anyway, I kind of think I'll be able to take Paris regardless. It's funny how you identify with the Germans early on this game. I said I will be able to take Paris. I guess it makes sense. Right now I'm in the Ger I'm playing the German side, so I'm in the German player's shoes. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to stay put. So this activation ends. So now the decision is what to activate, another armored unit or an infantry unit. So the plan I've come up with is to activate this unit. One, two, three. And declare a assault. This one, one, two, three. Same thing, assault, four, five, six. And this unit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, eight, actually. Assault. Okay, so that was three units costing three points. 
One, two, three. Um, Oops. Mm -hmm. So, as it stands, that would be what? Uh, plus two will be in German. Say that's the main one, right? Uh, let's make that the main one. So, plus two for German. Um, minus one attacking across a river, and I forget, is there anything... No, no city or anything, so just minus one. That's before any air is, support, is uh, devoted to it. Um, minus two for the reduced strength of the unit defending. Um, let's add air. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do that. Oh, forgot to add two for the the two extra units. So those, so this is the main attack. This is the main unit attacking, and these two are providing, um, yeah, uh, a plus one modifier each. So that's two more. So we've got five to minus two. So do we need the air? We need the air. Let's take a look at the CRT. Let's say you roll the three, add three to the six, minus two, three, four, two, defender retreats. Mm -hmm. So as long as the Germans roll a three or better, the Dutch unit would have to retreat. And now the only thing is they could retreat to Rotterdam and that would screw up what I have planned for over here. So I need to destroy that unit. Control. Okay, so that would be... So if there was another two added for the air Yeah, let's add the air. Okay, so it's five to minus two. First dice, German dice, four. Dutch, four. So four plus five is nine. Four minus two is two. It's nine to two. Where are you? Nine to two is DD, which is defender disrupted. If the defender is a reduced unit, eliminate it. So this is eliminated. Uh, okay. And this main unit can advance. It's no longer activated. Um, delete. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we add a sortie, deactivate it, so that's the end of the activations for this air unit. Okay, that worked out all right. So there's no more zones of control from that Dutch unit that could interfere with my plans over here. So, here's the plan would be to activate this, uh, where is it, this armored unit, move it over here, and attack that unit. Let's see, it would take one, no, it would take, 
one to, and across the river, one, two, three for that rough terrain, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, ten. It would use all of its movements, its, all of its ten points to make one attack on the French unit in Lille. This air unit would support it. it. can anticipate the British unit, the British air here supporting it. So that could be interesting. But that's what we're going to do. And that's what we're going to do next. So... I've already counted everything out, so we'll just go ahead and move it over there, activate it, pay for it, that's two to activate that because it's um, mechanized, where are we, there, and uh, take control of the city, all you have to do to, to, is to occupy it to take control of a city and activate this air unit activate this air unit so the attack is here there's no movement points left we didn't add these up yet because we have to see what happens with the air first Okay, exciting stuff. So, air. Um, German air gets a plus two. Does British air get anything? Uh, what am I looking for? CRT. UK air, uh, air, plus one. Okay. So, plus one. Uh, Germans are minus one because they have a sortie, so it's one and one. So we're rolling dice, German and British. Ooh, six to three in the British, so it's attacker, six, uh, attacker three, defender six. Uh, CRT, attacker three, defender six, AS plus two. AS plus two. Defender adds one sortie. Attacker equal to the uh, number side. Okay. So first result is we're going to add two to that and we're going to add one. Oops. One to this guy. Okay, so back to the CRT and find out what else happens. It was an AS plus two uh, air support. AS attacker and defender each receive air support. Okay, so so now we're talking ground support or the ground DRM. Uh, both of them get air. Germany gets two for being German, two for tanks. French get one for being French. Uh, what happens with the city? The city, I think it takes one away from the attacker. Let's see. CRT. Um, ground combat. Attacking a unit in a hex containing a city, minus one. So we take one away. So it's five and three. And everything's accounted for. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, five and three. One dice each. German, six. French, three. Six and five is eleven. Three and three is six. Eleven to three. Sorry, eleven to six. Eleven to six. Oh, just escaped. Well, 
they didn't. They, well, they didn't. Okay, so here. It's a DR. And it, it was close to a DD. But it wasn't. It's with DR. So DR means defender retreats. And remember, this is one of the situations where they don't have a retreat hex. It can't go here. It's in a zone of control. It can't go here. It's overstacking. It can't go here. It's in a zone of control. It can't go here. It's in a zone of control. So they can't retreat. So, and this, the CRT says that if you can't, if you have to retreat, but defender cannot retreat, if it's reduced unit, it's eliminated. If a unit's at full strength, reduce it. However, see, if it had been a DD result, it would have been disrupted and had to retreat. So it would have been ended up being eliminated. Instead, it stays in place but it's reduced. Now that's interesting. So this is at a movement point, so it has to end its activation. Now what's interesting about it is it's 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 um <clears throat> it's at reduced strength, so it's susceptible to an attack, but my armor is now deactivate it. So it's going to be an infantry unit from where though? I used three of them against the Dutch. Perhaps foolishly. Let's see if I can move this guy in and he has enough movement points. So he's moving along a transport line so he doesn't have to worry about terrain. One, two. Yeah, but once he gets here, he's in his own control. He can't go from directly from one hex that's in a zone of control to another hex but of the same unit that's in a zone of control. In fact, once he enters a zone of control, he has to fight or, or end his activation. He can't even like move here and then move out and move back in to a zone of control. He could, if he started here, he could move out and back in, but not in the middle of your movements. Okay. So, instead, he'd have to go this way. So that, and then he's got serious terrain up here. Let's see if it's possible. Uh, take a look at the terrain. Okay, so he could go one, two, three three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that would be all, he wouldn't have enough movement points to attack. So, the other option would be to get rid of this unit first, say with uh, one of these. Uh, the units in the forts don't have zones of control, so these units can move freely. Um, I just want to be able to launch one attack in, uh, against there. Is that a city? Yes, it is a city. So he needs to have three left. No, four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. So he needs to start with eight and have four left after he's entered this hex. Um, these, this guy could easily do it, so that's one, two. This guy, one, two, you know, what's that? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So he couldn't make it. Interesting. So if he makes it, if he does it and pushes this guy back, and again, what are the chances? Chances are pretty good that he'll stand in place. Even if he has to retreat, he won't retreat. He'll stand in place and take a reduction. So, I'd say it's going to be impossible to attack that unit again. Well, we'll take a shot at it. We'll take a shot at it. 
So the best shot is for this guy to move here and then attack. Activate. Cost is one. Where are we? National tracks. German. Down to 15. And eight points. One, two, three, four, four because to move in, five because it's a city, six because it's attacking. So only two left. And what are the odds? Plus two because it's German. Uh, we're going to use this. Yeah, we're going to activate that plane. So two more. Um, it's into a city, so minus one. It's across a river, so minus one. Oh, and uh, I might have even been too fast for that. Did I count the air? Yes, I did. Let's take the air off for now, because the French are going to have something to say about that. Um, and the French unit is a good for a plus one. So it's only plus two for Germany, but they lose two because of the river and the So that unit was coming from here, right? Yes. What if we went up here at a cost of one because that's a, that's a friendly city. So I don't have to pay the full train cost. So one and then two because, yeah. Yeah, let's do it that way. So instead of coming across here, he's going one, two, And now it's three, four, five. And he doesn't have to pay for the, it doesn't, uh, doesn't get a, a minus one DRM for the river, just a minus one DRM for the city. So he's actually at plus one. So without air, that's the situation. Interesting. Anyway, <clears throat> the uh, French are going to activate as well. So we got air, and the air um, definitely favors Germany. There's no uh, modifier for the French air other than the minus five. And the Germans get a plus two for their air and a minus three, so they're only at minus one. So it's minus one and minus five. Let's see what the result is. Minus one, minus five likely to be like uh, a no effect, and they're both going to have, hmm, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Maybe before we activate the... Yeah, let's do that. Before we activate the unit and make that move, we activate the German air, and it does a an airstrike on this French unit instead. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this guy's back here. I already paid for him. I'm just going to undo everything. So I'm going to deactivate him. Mark him not moved. I'm going to give myself back the production point that I paid to activate him. This is not activated. This is activated. The air unit. And it's going to do an airstrike on this guy. It's still what we talked about, which was minus one and minus five. So minus one and minus five, one dice. German is four minus one is three. French is four minus five is one. It's three to one, CRT, three to one, plus two. 
Uh, so most of this can go up to a six. This goes to four. So now we can do that uh, combat, but we don't have to worry about the French air because this cannot be activated. It's already maxed out at six. And that's too it's out of range for for the British. So the British can't support. So that makes things better. Um, so this is the unit, I think. Yeah, this was the unit that we activate. One, two, three, four, five, three left. Um, Oh yeah, pay for it. Paying for it. It's for the activation. And now we're going to uh, calculate the DRM. Attacker DRM is two for being German, two for the air, minus one for the attacking into a city. The French are plus one for being French. And that's it. So it's three to one. So uh, dice is German, French, five plus three is eight, three plus one is four, eight to four on the CRT, uh, DR. Look at that again, just missed by one from being uh, eliminating the unit. So it's reduced because it can't, it can't um, flip. So, because it can't retreat. There's no retreat path for it. And we have three movement points left. Now, can we attack again? One to move in. One to attack and one because it's a city. That's three. It actually can't. So it's going to do that again. It's going to activate the, uh, so this is down to zero movement points. It's going to activate the, did I put a sortie on this? Yes, it was at three. Now it's four. Okay, so we're going to add a sortie uh, and add two more. Was that right? No, it's not right. Okay, it was two for German, two for air. I must have added that already. Minus one for the attacking a city. And this time the French get the plus one for being French, but it also gets a minus two for being a reduced unit. So now we roll the dice. And we have Germany gets a one, French gets a one. All right, so the German modified roll is four and four to one on the CRT, four to one is DR, Defender Retreats. We know that it can't retreat, which means uh, if it's a reduced unit, it's eliminated. Okay, now a eliminated unit goes on the national, no it doesn't, goes on the faction card um, in the eliminated area so it can be rebuilt. However, it was a regular strength. Um, unit so it actually decreases the French national will by one. Let's see where are you? National tracks, national will down by one and you can see that national will. Uh, on the player aid card national will each time one of its field ground units is eliminated while defending in combat. Um, also, minus two to a country each time one of its mainland cities becomes enemy controlled. Well, Sedan just became enemy controlled because this is already paid 
to enter that that so it can advance after combat and place a control marker on the city and then deactivate. Uh, and that's the first French city to fall. So that's two less for the French national will. All right. Now I'm going to activate this unit, and the reason is because I can't resist this juicy French target over here. Um, and I worked out the DRM, and they don't look too bad. So I'm going to activate it for eight movement points and pay the cost, which is one production point. And then move it one, two, three. Uh, four to move in, five for the city, six because it's an attack. So it's going to be here with only two movement points left. And here's how the DRMs work. Uh, first of all, I will activate this German uh, air because the worst that can happen is it's, it's, it's going to get another... Um, just one more sortie and so what I mean yeah it's gonna get it's probably gonna get beaten by the, the UK air but um, it'll maybe it'll, who knows maybe it'll take a couple of sorties off or maybe they'll maybe it'll lose some sorties but it'll still be able to contribute to the combat so even if it doesn't and the UK for uh, Air Force does contribute to the combat the uh, DRMs are going to be one and one so it's still worth taking a shot at that uh, that reduced unit okay so air combat is going to be um, plus two for Germany because it's German air minus five so minus three for Germany and one for the British Air and minus one, so zero. So zero, or who's attacking? Germany's attacking, so minus three and zero. So here's the dice minus three, so one and five. CRT one and five is AS plus two. So AS plus two defender adds one, that's the British attacker adds two, but they can only max out at six. So they're both gonna end up adding one. And AS on um, air support means attacker and defender each receive air support. So this worked out good for the attacker. So this goes up one, this goes up one, and, uh, and let's start from the base. So the Germans get, uh, the, this is the ground attack now, they get two for being German, two for having air, lose one because they're attacking a city. The defender gets uh, one for being French and two for air and lose two for the uh, reduced strength. So it's three to one for the attacker. Dice Germany gets a four plus three is seven. French get a 1 plus 1 is 2, it's 7 to 2, and CRT 7 to 2 is DD. DD is Defender Disrupted if the Defender's Reduced Strength Unit eliminated. So even, even uh, if they uh, could have retreated into a space, it still would have been eliminated. So we're going to move that up into the faction. Uh, faction card for eliminated and we're going to reduce let's see it's a city it's a factory too so there's a couple of things we do there so we're moving in and placing a control marker there and we're going to the national tracks and reducing the French will by two more and also we're reducing the French factory count by one which will re result in less production points for the French. 
And they have two more of this unit. Okay, let's deactivate the air units. And uh, this German infantry unit has two more movement points. It's stuck in a zone of control, which means it has to fight. And I don't think two is enough. One to move in. Yeah, one to move in and one to attack it, unless it's a city. It's not. So. If it does, well, uh, we can on um, no support from German air and likely, definitely support from the British air, which would mean that it would be what? Let's do the odds. Um, attacker, let's see. Attacker would be two for being German. That's it. And one for being French, the defender, and two for air. So it would be a slight advantage to the defender. Hmm. And no real great advantage. It would pin this French troop down, whereas now, right now they can escape this way. That might be something in that. What's the worst that can happen? Likely just a uh, an attacker stopped. What's AA? Attacker attrition. Be reduced. I don't want that. Eh. It's not likely. I don't know. Fortune aids the daring, right? Let's do it. Okay, they're attacking. So, yes, this is going up. A sortie. And German dice. Five. Plus two is seven. French dice. Three plus three is six. Seven to six. It's going to be nothing, I think. Seven to six is nothing. So, a small victory for the Germans, just in that they had they were able to add a sortie to the British air. And the, 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 active, the activation is over. That may be it. I don't think there's... Well, there's a little bit of shuffling that we can do here. So, what I'm inclined to do... is just to minimize activations maybe let's see if I move how far could I move this guy see we don't want say this unit leaving the fort and moving in say could move in I could move into either of these hexes and its zone of control could possibly cut supply so at least we want to let's see if we can move this guy up um, one so we don't need to worry about zones of control. They don't extend outside forts. So one, two, three, I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can go to here. Or this one. Could go. Actually, let's go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I want to put them here, though. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do that. So, he activates at a cost of one German production point. And that's probably all we're going to do. 
with German units. And now we have to take a gander at the Italians. I'm actually not as Italy not inclined to do anything, given that because Italy joined the war early, France and Britain, in anticipation of, con of uh, the uh, appeasement ending, have brought their troops right to the border. Um, historically, Italy didn't have to face France because it didn't enter the war until France was... Uh, was looked after by Germany and it just could focus on the UK but not in this case so I think the Italian strategy is to try to hold on with the Tobruk fort and um, you know basically they have even strength with the British in the east and in the west uh, although there's a French, full French infantry and a uh, garrison unit that confronts just the one Italian infantry unit, they do have the Italian air, which is within five of Tripoli, that can be used to balance the uh, situation there. Plus, they're occupying a city for defense. So, there's no real reason to do anything for Italy. It would be kind of suicidal for the Italian air to try to take on the carrier force in especially in fair weather. So Italy is not going to move anything. Um, again here on the French border the French are, have got more defensible terrain so that's not going to happen either. So now it's the supply sub phase this Italian unit has to trace supply through Benghazi via the convoy, which will be escorted by the fleet. And they will trace the supply route of, uh, through Sea Zone 24 to Brindisi. Now that makes that supply, that convoy, subject to interception by Force H. And uh, the British Mediterranean fleet, which is in Alexandria, so that's one sea zone and two sea zones, so it's within range. So I think the uh, I think Force H will have first crack at it after calculating the DRM. It would be plus four for Force H intercepting the Italian fleet and zero for the Italian fleet. So I think I'm going to back up a little bit and the Italian air is going to try to take a sortie or two off of, um, well, probably one, off of Force H. So we're going to activate this and do a strike, a, car a strike on the carrier force. Um, let's calculate the odds together, or the, we say the odds, but it's the DRM that we're calculating. So, um, the only thing would be, uh, oops, sorry, I'm not showing, there we go. So, air unit versus naval unit, plus one, that's the only... <clears throat> The only DRM that the Italians get and the British get plus two as, as a UK naval unit and plus two as a carrier in fair weather and that's it so let's see what happens all right so one dice this is Italian one and British six, okay. <laughs> so that was not a good idea for the Italians to do. So we've got uh, one, two, two for the attacker and 10 for the defender. Where are you there? 
2 down 10 is AA, which is what? Wait now, AA plus 3? 2 down 10, AA plus 3. AA defender adds 1 sortie, that's the British attacker at sortie is equal to the number. And yeah, that was just a, an, an assault uh, or a, an, a strike on the it was naval combat, air to, air to naval combat, so that's it. So that was not a good idea. Well, it was and it wasn't. Mostly it wasn't just because of the role, but who's to, who's to know what the role is going to be? So um, place marker sortie add. So it's up to three, and force H has one sortie, which is all we expected. Just that we didn't expect uh, the Italians to take three uh, uh, three sorties for that. Okay, so now we're back to this. This time it's the same. Um, okay, so this it's the the um, force H is intercepting, so they're the attacker. So it's plus four, uh, plus three. It was plus four, but it's going to be minus one for the sortie. And the Italian fleet is zero. So now we're rolling, and the uh, British get four plus three is seven. Italians get four plus zero is four. So it's seven down four. Seven down four is DR plus two. <coughs> DR. So air naval combat, the air attacker adds one, defender adds the number and amount, so two for the Italians. And then we look down here for escort, DR, DR escort failed, intercepting unit may attack again if it has less than six sorties. So this is what we do. The Italian fleet takes two sorties, um, Force H takes one, so now the, the, the escort failed, Force H was able to penetrate the escort shield and attack the convoy now, so it's now Force H against the convoy, so it's going to be two for the uh, UK naval unit, two for a carrier operating in fair weather, minus two for the sorties, and minus two for the fact that a convoy unit gets a minus two uh, modifier. So the British roll five plus two is seven. The Italians roll two minus two is one. Seven to one on the CRT. 7 to 1 is DD plus 3. DD attacker, okay, so again the plus 3 applies to Italy. And DD down here on uh, where? Interdiction. DD interdiction successful. Uh, we look down to supply line trace. The supply line trace fails. The convoy and any escort units activation ends. The supply state of the unit tracing supply is reduced by one level from its last turn supply state. No more than one supply state reduction per turn. Okay, so now, so what was it? A two, wasn't it? Or a three? It was a plus three, yeah. So three sorties. For the convoy, one sortie for Force H. The convoy and the escort. Um, well, the con the supply trace was was didn't work. Now the CRT says that that means the activation ends. Well, that's true. The activation ends, but they still have sorties that they can use. They're not up to six, so it can reactivate. They can activate again and attempt to, to trace the supply route. Um, so we don't actually go ahead and, and reduce the supply level of the of the infantry unit in Tripoli yet. But things are not looking good for being able to 
supply everybody. So we'll try again though. So same deal. There, uh, the fleet is escorting the convoy. Same, same supply route, and this time it would actually be an advantage for the British to use the Mediterranean fleet over here as the intercepting unit. So that's what they're going to do. And uh, this time the attacker is just a plus two because all uh, British, um, British naval units get a plus two DRM. There's no plus two for the carrier and there's no negatives because there's no sorties. For the Italians, there is, starts with zero, that we're just talking about the fleet. Oh, let's make sure you can see this. Uh, we're just talking about the fleet. So the fleet has minus two and that's the only modifier. So, dice, one for the British, two plus two is four. Italians, six minus two is four. CRT four down four is diamond shape, which is they both uh, get a sortie and the escort is successful. The intercepting unit's activation ends, which means the um, there's no attack on the convoy, so it succeeds. And the unit in Tripoli is fully supplied. So we add one sortie to both of those units and we also add a sortie to the British Mediterranean fleet which is no longer activated. All right now we have to go through this again for the infantry unit in the fort at Tobruk. So, same deal. He traces his supply route to Benghazi and the supply line is traced up through the C-Zone 24 to Brindisi. Now, this time uh, it's going to be the Mediterranean fleet again. So why? Because Although the carrier gets a plus two for being a carrier that the fleet doesn't get, it gets a minus, it gets minus three for the sorties and the Mediterranean fleet only has a minus one. So, so it cancels out the advantage of the plus two. And since the fleet already has one sortie and it's going to cost the same three production points to get rid of two as it will to get rid of one, um, it can better afford to do that. Uh, the the Force H is already going to only be able to get rid of two sorties. So, we're going to activate the Mediterranean fleet. I just want to make note that uh, like uh, these fleets are in port. So, but rather than place them in that hex, placing them just one hex outside is just a good way to keep things tidy and make sure you can see all of the units. And that's why the Mediterranean fleet doesn't have to worry about Sea Zone 26, because Alexandria is bordering both Sea Zone 26 and 25. So it's, that's why it was, it's within two. You only count the Sea Zones, one, two. And two is the range for interception. Okay, so that's activated. Uh, these guys are activated. And the calculation is, it's, I always like to start at zero, or try to. So the it's British are attacking, plus two for the British unit, uh, minus one for the sortie, and here we have minus three. So, dice, British, two, plus one is three, Italian, one minus three is one. So three to one, where are you? There, three to one DR plus two. DR escort. So DR means, okay, so we know this. Uh, one sortie for the British, two sorties for the Italian. 
and escort DR, escort failed, intercepting unit may attack again, so it's going to be able to attack the convoy. So, oops, so the sorties on the escort go up by two, sorties on the fleet go up by one, so now it is uh, plus two, minus two. And convoy is at minus four to begin with, and minus another two for being a convoy unit. So zero and minus six. The uh, British roll is three, zero is three, and Italian is six, minus six is zero, so it's three, zero, ah, three, one rather. You can never get uh, a zero. Where are we? Three to one is a DR plus two. And I believe, before I was interrupted by a Windows update, that that was the interdiction attack on the convoy. So, DR plus DR is uh, actually, let me just adjust this. There we go. DR um, so the plus two is the Italian sorties. Um, interdiction DR, interdiction successful. So no supply was traced. So the convoy is up to six now. The Mediterranean fleet's up to three, <clears throat> and there is no more capacity to try again. It can't be activated again. It's at six. So that means that uh, we place a supply marker, low supply, on here and on here. Place supply. Low supply, yep. Okay. And that is the end of the Axis uh, operations phase. It's now the Western operations phase. The Western Allies have come up with a rather bold plan for a counterattack. It's going to require some luck, but this is the way it works. The French will activate this unit at a cost of one production point. and move it to the space where it will join in, the, in an assault uh, against this German infantry unit. This French unit will activate as well for one production point and will also join in the attack, the assault. And the goal is to, uh, with a lucky roll aided by the British air, to push this f unit out of Lille back into Brussels and that would cut off any possible retreat line for this German armored unit which would then be assaulted by three units in these hexes. But it all depends on the success of this assault. So British Air is activated as the, defend the uh, um, hex being attacked is within five and uh, no German units, air units remain with sorties to spare, so they can't assist. So the odds for the attacker are, um, let's say this is the main unit, it's plus one for being French, um, plus two for the air, minus one for the fact that it's attacking into a city. The Germans get plus two for being German, and that's all. So it's two to two. Oops, I almost forgot to add the extra plus one for the French because there's uh, two units assaulting. So it's three and two. 
So the French row 4 plus 3 is 7, and the Germans 2 plus 2 is 4. 7 to 4 on the CRT is the defender retreats. So that worked. The German unit can only go to Brussels. They lose control of the city of Lille. As that unit advances after combat, and its activation ends. And we add a sortie here. And rather than denude the, the Parisian defense, the BEF is going to activate at a cost of two and move into this X where it is going to join an assault against the German armor unit. So I activated this British air unit and it rebased one hex at a cost of one more sortie just so that it could be within uh, five of the assault hex so that it can assist with ground support. So the main, ha uh, the main unit is going to be this one and the DRMs work out to be plus five for, for the French British force and plus four for the Germans. I'm going to increase this right now. There we go. And roll the dice. So the French three plus five is eight. The Germans one plus four is five. Eight to five. Eight down five is a DR. Fascinating. So that means that because it can't retreat, it has to take a hit. So it is now a reduced unit, which will make it that uh, I'll give it a minus two DRM uh, for its attacks next turn. Except the Germans will be able to uh, replace that. Uh, to use replacement points to bulk that back up, but eh, I think it was worth doing, especially since on the CRT, if the Germans had rolled a little worse and it had been a DD, it would have been eliminated. The Spanish are staying at home on the rationale that they're not going to be able to do much, if anything, to assist France. Um, and if they can just hold out maybe a little corner of Spain, they will stretch the German defense of the coastline of Europe thinner and maybe even hold out um, a little enclave that uh, could be used to pour in some troops at some point rather than have to invade the uh, Normandy or somewhere like that. In Africa, the British certainly want to take advantage of the fact that the Italians are in low supply here in the in the east. So the British are activating the uh, WDF unit. Um, it's mech, mech or motorized, so it costs two. And moving to here, now that costs an extra point for crossing a mountain hexide and it's going to uh, do an assault, participate in an assault on that unit. I'm going to move that to here and um, yeah so we'll make, we'll place an assault marker there and I make that move after considering the supply implications. There has to be able to trace the supply line of no more than two hexes to a transport line that's not in an enemy zone of control or occupied by an enemy unit or an, uh, an enemy city. <clears throat> so in this case either of these hexes is fine because this Italian unit inside the fort at Tobruk doesn't exert an, a zone of control, so even this hex is available um, for, as to, to form a part of the western supply line. 
but in any event this one would be free so um, so even if this unit attacks and eventually uh, moves uh, advances after combat into this hex because this uh, presumably let's see yes well anyway right now it can it can be in supply and we'll make sure that any advance after combat uh, keeps it in supply even if the unit in Tobruk comes outside the fort and regains its zone of control. That's covered by, uh, I think it's rule 1.7 that deals with zones of control. Anyway, meanwhile, this unit will, will um, also activate at a cost of one and move in here to participate in the assault. So I've calculated the odds uh, preliminarily. The attacker, the British, get one for being British and one because there's two units participating in the assault. The defender has a minus two because it's already a only a garrison unit, so a reduced strength unit, and it is suffering from a minus two for low supply, so it's a minus four. Now, given those circumstances, um, when it comes to the utilization of the tank event markers, the British, this is the only attack they're going to engage in this turn, so they'll be using theirs. And I think the Italians want to preserve theirs for use against the French, as the French will possibly be assaulting Tripoli, which is more significant. Um, even though they're going to have air support, the Italians will have air support as well. It's just more significant um, than having to retreat from from this particular space. So, so the uh, tank marker for the British and no Ital no Italian tank marker. So that actually increases the British uh, uh, DRM by two more. So it's plus four minus four first dice six so and six interesting better for the British here so that's going to be ten to two on the CRT and ten to two is defender eliminated so that was let's see if the uh, Italians had have used their tank it would have been ten to four it would have been DD which does mean that it was defender disrupted if the defenders a uh, reduced unit eliminated it would have been eliminated anyway so good decision either way it would have been a bad result just because of the high dice rolls all right so the Italian unit goes into the eliminated box on the axis faction card oh might as well get that back up here. Oh, no, we don't. We put the uh, British tank unit on the turn track um, for what month? It would be the next month, so June. And either of these units can advance after combat into the attack hex. It's going to be the garrison unit which can still trace line of supply. It can always trace through a friendly unit. And this space here is the second space. So, and that's a transport line. So there's uh, no problem with supply line. And they're well positioned for an assault on Tobruk next turn. And the loss of the Italian unit doesn't do anything for Italian national will because it wasn't a full field unit. Note, though, that um, as it is, the unit in Tobruk is not in full supply. And it has a problem with, with uh, tracing supply now because it can't trace through an enemy zone of control. This unit exerts an enemy uh, or a zone of control into this hex. So it's cut off from supply unless it can supply through the port because Tobruk is not a limited supply source. It doesn't have a factory mark, uh, a factory symbol on the hex. 
Uh, so that means it, it can only supply through the port if there's a convoy unit in that port. So that's something the Italians have to deal with next turn. Meanwhile, what are the French going to do? Okay, I've decided on, on what I want to do here, but I'll explain my reasoning first. Um, I'm going to uh, do a mobile attack with this French unit. It's not going to be an assault because although I can bring this reduced strength garrison unit, uh, I can bring it up to here and it still have enough movement points left to engage in an assault in Tripoli. I don't want to leave it there and then have the full infantry unit here because if the Italians survive this and then counterattack this way and take that hex, then depending on how badly they maul this French reduced strength unit, let's say they eliminated it, then the Italian zone of control would extend to this hex and it would cut off supply from the French infantry unit. Now, having said that, if that, had ha if that were to happen, the Italian unit advanced af after combat to here, the French unit could then activate in its next turn, move out of the zone of control, and then re-enter it by t and going right into Tripoli. But then it would be unlikely to hold Tripoli against the Italians. Oh, well, the Italians would be out of supply as well. Hmm. Anyway, as you can see, it gets complicated, and the French are in no real hurry. So I think we'll stick with the plan that I came up with, which is a mobile assault this turn, and then a mobile attack this turn and then an, an, an assault next turn. So uh, first, let's see, first activate this unit at a cost of one production point, bring the French down to 11. And that gives it uh, eight points. So moving to here is one, here is two, and here is one for the space, two because it's an enemy city, and three because it's attacking. So three more. So it would have three left. Both sides are using their tank events, and the Italians are also involving their air unit. So Let's start this over again, and, oops. So the attacker is plus one for being French, plus two for the tanks. Minus one because they're attacking a city. The defender has plus two for the tanks and plus two for the air. So, plus two for the French, plus four for the Italians. Let's see what happens. Just a passing note, um, grounds, uh, when air provides ground support, it can't be intercepted. So Force H can't ex intercept these Italian, the Italian air. Um, if, but of course, as you saw earlier, if both sides committed air to same, uh, same attack, uh, you'd have to resolve air combat first. So that's not an interception. Okay, so f the French are attacking, the French roll and add two, that's two plus two is four, and the uh, Italians roll well, five plus four is nine, so four to nine. Okay, four to nine is AS, and AS means attacker stopped, so um, the uh, French did have enough movement points left for another mobile assault. I'm not sure about the terminology there. I'm not sure if it's a mobile assault or if it's a mobile attack, because assault is when more than one unit um, attacks. So anyway, uh, but anyway, they can't do it now because the result was that they, uh, the AS result means they have to cease their activation. OK, 
okay and uh, and that's it there so these go on the turn track for the next turn and we're gonna activate this unit and bring it up one two three four five six seven to here deactivate and pay the one production point for that bringing the French to ten. Oh, I forgot to deactivate the Italian air and increase their sorties okay now it's the the Western uh, supply sub phase so we're happy to leave these guys as they are and over let's see deal with dealing with the French two French units so again um, this French unit can trace supply two two hexes one two to a transport line which can then be connected to a supply source which in this case would be Algiers and then via the convoy to Marseille um, which is a home supply source so full supply so that is a and there's no possibility of interception because the Italians the Axis don't have any naval units within two sea zones and they don't have an air unit within the sea zone so we're just going to add a sortie uh, actually we're going to add two one for each of the French units so they're both in full supply the British want to keep both of these units in supply they can trace the supply line to the either convoy um, I think they're going to use I'm going to move this sort of unit uh, marker to here so that it doesn't I'm not confused about whether it applies to this Italian air unit or the British convoy same with this um, sort of unit applies to force H and not to the convoy so I'll move it. I was considering moving this convoy unit back to the UK proper the British Isles but yeah I think it might just so that would be a naval rebase technically it takes place before I start the supply sub phase but I'm not gonna worry too much about that since there's no prejudicial effect to the axis I activate it which doesn't cost any production points because it's naval or air they pay in sorties rather than production points and it gets 10 movement points and it counts C zones rather than hexes so we have one, two, three, four, five, and six to bring it to Southampton. It's not being escorted. And the reason it's not being escorted because if I escort it with Force H, Force H has to accompany it the whole the whole way so force h would be way up in southampton as well rather than down in malta where it can continue to play havoc with the italian supply lines so it's a bit of a chance but what the hay um it could be intercepted is what i'm saying by this italian air let's see what the odds or what the drms would be attacker would be um, minus four and the defender would be minus two so we look at the CRT I mean chances are it's not gonna do any damage let's say the the attacker um, let's say the Italians roll what, what was it minus four and minus two so let's say the 
Italians roll a four minus four is you know one. So chances are they'd have to roll a six minus four is two. Yeah, they. Yeah, it's it's not it can't work out to the Italians' favor. So, so it's a safe safe thing to do. So that's what's going to happen. They're not in there intercepting. And um, let's see, a quicker way to do this would be like so. I'll put them right there and place a sortie marker and deactivate there. Oops, this is still activated. Turn that off. Okay and zoom in again okay back to supply so that does leave um, force H needing to pay for its own supply which it will do it will not be intercepted at a cost of a sortie and the we already looked after the French supply the British supply it's going to be uh, from these two units from this convoy and the fleet I think the fleet is going to supply from this convoy as well okay so that's now the only other thing is the BEF has to be supplied and it can't trace to French supply it has to trace to British supply so it has to use this convoy unit it can do so easily um, so it traces say just to Paris and Paris is, um, has a transport line to Le Havre so we're gonna place a sortie marker right there so it's unambiguously attached to this convoy. All right. So that's pretty, that's Western supply looked after. It's now the Soviet operations phase, and Soviets remain content to sit on their heels. For now. Uh, everybody, there's no, there's nothing to do in the no, in this, in our case right now, in the no supply phase. So replacement phase for Axis. This is where the Axis can flip a reduced strength unit over to its full strength side or uh, remove sorties. And they definitely want to look after this armored unit. And that's going to cost what? Uh, replacement turnover a reduced mobile ground unit to full strength costs two two production points that brings the Germans down to 11 production points um, note that you can do that even if you're in a zone of control if you're you know yeah if you're if you got a unit that's inside a zone of control as long as it's supplied so we flip that and the next thing with that so that leaves us with what did I say 11 we want to use 9 to improve the sortie situation with three air units so that would leave us with two production points yeah so we want to reduce this by two and this one by two and also this one up here by two so okay what about the Italian the Italians didn't activate any any of their ground units this month so they still have 11 points so that's good for uh, to improve the air adjust down so that costs three 
leaving them with eight. So they'll spend three to reduce the sorties on this convoy and four to reduce it on this fleet, leaving them with one. Next is replacement phase for West. So they're going to reduce to pay uh, four to reduce the sorties on the Mediterranean fleet. That's four. Oops. Oops. <laughs> pay five to reduce Force H and pay three to reduce their their air unit in Britain and they that would leave them with let's see that's three and four and five right so that's uh, 12 so that leaves them with one the French have 10 looks like yep so this air unit is important so we spend three there, bringing it down to seven. And what else? The only other one is here. So let's say spend three to get rid of that. And that brings them down to four. And there's nothing else they really need to do. Okay. We deal with Spain now as well as part of the West because they're equally a Western ally at this point, but they don't have any deficiencies to worry about. So next we move on to replacement phase. Soviets, they don't have anything to replace. Upgrade, there are no upgrades available right now. Mobilization for the Axis. If, if there were any units in the mobilization box, we could spend some production points to mobilize those units. But there aren't. So we move on to the diplomacy phase. Now, interestingly, let's see if anybody has any points to spend. The British don't. The French don't. Well, they don't have five. They need five. And neither of them have five. The Germans don't. They only have two left. The Soviets do, so they'll spend five. Let's see, diplomacy, where are you? Here we go. Um, the diplomacy, they will spend five and draw from the cup. And they draw a pro-axis marker, which basically wastes that for the axis. It's no, it's no, uh, no event. Nothing happens because it was pulled by an enemy power, an enemy faction. And that's not available like here, where um, the axis could pay five and put it back in the cup. It's gone. There. Okay, so that's diplomacy. Well, that's yeah, Axis, Western, and Soviet diplomacy. Victory check, we don't have to do that. End of turn phase. So um, one thing we do here is uh, we move anything in the eliminated boxes moves down to the mobilization boxes where it can be, where they can be built next turn in the mobilization phase. Next, we deal with the turn marker and moving into June, we see all these units that come back. So, we bring them back. Um, Italian tanks come back here and the French and British tanks come back here and lo and behold, the British get a new air unit and we're playing the main event scenario and on page 27 of the uh, playbook it tells me that this unit goes into the mobilization box 
so it's ready to be built next turn and we move to June and we'll end this video at the end of May and get ready for the next one which will start with June of 1940.